All right, guys, welcome uh, to our first video edition of our 30 day get shredded nutrition, fitness, overall comprehensive program. It's going to take you through the next 30 days to get those holiday weight or those holiday pounds shed and, uh, and then some. Uh, what I want to first talk about today is the nutrition guidelines that we're going to follow during this 30 day get shredded program. Um, and uh, what I want to first talk about is the, the, the nutrition guidelines that I decided to, to follow. It's very similar to the primal diet that we did back in November. I decided to do that or follow that again because one, you guys have already been exposed to it. Uh, two, it offers a really large variety of different recipes and ways that you can arrange your foods to keep you um, interested in, in, in things like that. And I think it's, it's maintainable or easy, easier to follow or stick with. We could have chose a much more strict, um, hardcore diet for 30 days, but we know that when we take approaches like that, simply what happens is at the end of the 30 days, we end up falling off the wagon, going back to old, worse habits, and the results are not maintainable long term. So what we're going to go through here is, it's called, referred to as kind of the primal or paleo diet. We're not choosing that just because it's, because it is that, we're choosing it again because I think it's something that you can stick with long term. So have that in the back of your mind. The whole goal of this not, is not just to get through the 30 days uh, perfectly, although that is goal number one. But goal number two is to make this more of a lifetime, uh, lifestyle habit for you, okay? So if you take a look at the board here, <clears throat> the overarching idea is to eat real food, period, okay? If it's not real, if it didn't come on, grow out of the earth in one way or the other, um, we're gonna try not to eat it or we're not gonna eat it, period. We break that down into three different categories. Um, we call them, they're called macronutrients. Macronutrients are what you call protein, carbohydrates, and your fats. So when you look at the back of a nutrition label for any type of food that you can buy at the grocery store, most often it breaks it down into these three categories, okay? Um, and that's all we'll talk about today. There's more specifics that will, uh, will come uh, in the future. So we wanna go through each macronutrient list, and we want to touch on the type of foods that are approved. We'll touch briefly on what's not approved if it's something that's very commonly consumed by people in our, our culture. Um, but for the most part, basically, if it's not on the list, you don't eat it, period. Is it easy? No, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you it's easy. For some, it may be easy. For others, it may be difficult at first. The more you do it, the more, the easier it will get. Um, but again, going back to, is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Yes. I'm never going to sit here and tell you it's easy, but I will tell you that it will be worth it. All right. So going through protein first, your sources of protein, super simple here. Meat. That's it. We want beef. We want poultry and we want seafood or fish, ideally getting them from lean sources. Um, so touching on seafood and fish, working our way backwards here, this is a fantastic source. We'll talk about fats a little bit later and healthy fats. They are a great source, not only of protein, but of those healthy fats that we need for brain function and for um, igniting that metabolism. We'll talk, touch on later. Poultry, that's you know chicken or turkey or whatever else kind of poultry that you can imagine. Those are typically from leaner um, sources as well. Seafood and poultry or fish and poultry are two really good sources of meat because they typically come in lean cuts. Beef. Um, beef is a, a great source to kind of change things up. Depending on what cut of beef you have, just be aware that they can come in pretty fatty cuts. Fat is not necessarily going to be the enemy. That is a, a very common misconception in our culture that if you eat fat, you'll get fat. And I'll touch on carbohydrates in a second and discuss how it's kind of flipped or inverted and carbohydrates are what is making us fat, not necessarily fat itself. But just be aware, anytime we don't want to consume too much fat either. So don't be sitting at home eating um, you know, fatty T-bone steaks every night, things like that. Not that any of us could afford to do that anyways. So here are your three main sources of protein, all right? Pretty straightforward. Under poultry, there's eggs as well. And of course, there's a, a small source of protein in um, nuts and seeds. I just want to mention that we're going to stay away from legumes or beans um, on this diet as well. So we've got beef, poultry, and seafood or fish for your lean sources of protein or meat. Second, talking about carbohydrates. So you've probably heard this, carbohydrates are the enemy. I don't believe that. They're not the enemy. 
It's all about what source you get them from. This is where I would say 90% of people in our culture, aka America, go wrong. <clears throat> we eat too much processed carbohydrates in the form of grain like bread and pasta and things like that that are incredibly dense, high calorie, uh, full of carbohydrate sources that in all reality we just can't burn that amount of calories in a day. Okay, so where are we going to get our sources of carbohydrates from? We want green, leafy sources. Um, vegetables are kind of nice because it's just like a stoplight system. If it's green, go. You can eat as much of it as you want. Pile it on the plate, pile it high, eat a ton of it. It's nice because that will fill you up and they're not, it's full of nutrients, it's full of fiber and things like that. It will help digestion, it will help ramp up your metabolism. It'll fill you up, but it's not super high in calories, for lack of a better term right now. Sources there would be things like green beans, asparagus, um, split peas, uh, things like that. Um, I know I said we're not going to eat beans. Green beans are not necessarily a bean in that same category, so that can be a little confusing. I also have on here squash. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about starches, and, and some people would say that squash is a starch. However, I really like squash in all its different types. Um, because it's super high in, um, in fiber and other nutrients that are extremely important to, again, ramping up the metabolism, aiding in digestion, digestion and things like that. And I'll come back to touch on how much you, can, you should eat squash. But again, if it's green, go. Eat as much as you want. Second portion, we're good to eat vegetables, but we want to limit starches and fruit. Okay, so if it's yellow, so for the most part, like a sweet potato, you want to yield there. So potatoes, corn, carrots, squash to a certain degree. Um, we can have it, we can eat it, sorry, fruit as well. You can have it, you can eat it, but we want to limit our intake on that source. Okay, we want to limit to one to two times a day. Reason being, while it does, um, it, those sources do have, again, the really good nutrients, the great fiber and things like that, they also can be pre carbohydrate or caloric dense at times, okay, depending on how much you eat, of course. So we want to limit that. And we'll talk about timing, about timing when you eat certain things um, around working out, waking up and going to sleep and things like that. We'll talk about that later, but just to have that in the background, okay? So we want to limit the starches and fruit. Again, fruit, while it does have fiber and good things in it as well, it does have sugar in it. Um, Bottom line, sugar leads to insulin, insulin leads to fat storage, period. And that's what we're trying to get away with, get away from. Uh, the one thing I really want to touch on, you did not see grains on here, no grains or sugar. And I know I said you could eat fruit, but because that's from a natural source, you can have that in small doses. But we want no refined sugar, no refined grains, no grains, period. Okay, that includes bread, pasta, obviously sweets like cake and cupcakes, and that's a pretty straightforward given that you shouldn't be eating that. But pasta and bread, I, I hear this all the time, if it's whole grain bread, it's okay, right? No, it's not. Whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, whatever whole grain, period, if it comes from wheat, it's, gonna, it's going to lead to the same exact insulin response as a cupcake. It does not, everybody thinks because it has more fiber in it, it slows down the digestive system, the, the, the digestive process and it doesn't spike insulin. It's wrong, period, straightforward. Um, and this is the guideline that we're gonna follow, no brains. That might be tough for some of you guys. You're gonna get used to eating a lot of meat and a decent amount of vegetables, 